So thank you very much, Raphael. So a very nice presentation. So this is again uh, another of the so-called monofocal plus, they're sometimes called enhanced monofocal. So my question to you is, are you actually giving to the patients as a monofocal lens and then just hoping for better outcomes as you've shown? Or are you actually telling the patients that they, are, they should expect a very good outcome? and therefore also raising hopes. And with hopes, you may also have some patients where these hopes are not fulfilled. Well, I tried to, to uh, hello to all of you, first of all, and, and thank you very much for the invitation. I tried to explain to my patients what they're, they're supposed to get after the implantation, which is a, an excellent distance vision and an improvement in intermediate vision and in glasses independence compared to the, to the monofocal, classic aspheric monofocal lens. I don't uh, expect them to have a total independence of glasses, but I insist they're not going to have some of the adverse effects, visual effects they, they would get if they were in, implanted a trifocal diffractive lens. So, so yes, I, I, I try to give them the, the results we're obtaining with these lenses. Yeah. yeah. If you don't really sell it as a premium lens, would you also put it in routinely in glaucoma AMD diabetes patients, would you do any harm using this technology? I don't think there would be a, a, a major difference compared to a classic aspheric monofocal lens. I think patients with severe uh, macular disease or with severe uh, optic neuropathies won't get an advantage in getting this technology, but most of the patients with intermediate diseases in the, in the optic nerve and the macula can get a benefit from these lenses. I, I don't have a large experience with patients with maculopathies or uh, glaucomas, uh, but I think if the damage in the optic nerve or the, or the macula is moderate, uh, I wouldn't be too bothered really to, to implant these lenses. Yeah. Mayank? I mean, uh, yeah, Philomena, go ahead. Uh, hi, Rafael. Uh, I was because um, my experience with uh, these uh, kind of uh, IOLs that plays with uh, negative uh, uh, spherical aberration is that in very small eyes, maybe because there are a high power of the IOL, they work very, very well. Uh, and you said that the, in this uh, IOL, there is a, a difference uh, on uh, spherical operation with uh, high oil power. Do you also see these in very small eyes or not? Definitely, what, you, what you're telling is, is the truth. Usually when we're performing, for example, a classic monovision, uh, higher power lenses get better results because of the pseudo accommodation with, with higher lenses. In these cases, the, this model is customized to get a higher as negative spheric aberration in higher dioptric powers for different reasons. But one of them is because usually higher power lenses are more used in hyperopic eyes, which have a higher positive corneal aberration. And this is a way to compensate for this change. And in these cases, uh, we, we have, uh, better functional results. Yes, you're right. Many of these patients also have small pupils and adding to that the effect of the stenopaic uh, effect with small pupils, they, you can have excellent results in this, especially in these hyperopic patients with, with small pupils. Can, can, can you elaborate on this a little bit more? Do you have any problems with, you know, large pupil, small pupil? I don't think there would be a, a, a very a different effect in large pupils or small pupils. But in small pupils, although the spherical aberration effect is minor because there is less different between the paraxial rays and the more peripheral rays because the pupil is smaller, you have the positive effect in extending the depth of focus of the stenopaic effect. So you have one, one effect that counterbalance the other one. Uh, one excellent benefit of these lenses is they're not so, so pupil dependent. And the, um, the, the negative effects of a diffractive lens that are more important in large pupils is not found with these lenses. Arthur, you have a short comment? Thank you, Oliver. Nice talk, Rafael. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. What Arthur. I want to ask you is, are you using this lens in a monovision or blended vision approach? And if so, or if you think you might do it, what do you think you would target for the reading eye? 
it's a great question, Arthur. Um, I, I started implanting them in both eyes for emetropia. Right now I'm using uh, minus 0.5 in the first eye and emetropia in the second eye. And, and, and this provides binocularly an extension of the depth of focus and an improvement in both intermediate and near vision. It's important to say to this patient that they're going to need glasses for reading for, for near, uh, near activities uh, extended in time, but many of them can manage for fast uh, activities in near vision without the need of glasses. Usually I, I tell them before the operation, they're going to need approximately near glasses with plus 125 or plus 115, but for the rest of their, their usual tasks, they can manage very well without glasses. Well, thank you very much, Rafael. We have to continue again. Thank you for that nice presentation. And thank you. We'll thank you very much to all of you. Pleasure. We'll continue with Ilan Panda.